The number of new coronavirus cases continues to soar. More than 700,000 people have been infected. The death toll, more than 33,000, and it is spreading fast, well beyond China. France now emerging as one of Europe's new hotspots. Spain reporting more than 800 deaths in one day. More than 32,000 people could be infected from just one initial sick person. The novel coronavirus has spread faster than any epidemic in recent memory. It's called the stealth virus for a reason. Patients are infectious even before they have symptoms. That means fully eradicating COVID-19 could hinge on the development of a vaccine, which may be more than a year away. Today, we're going to talk about why a vaccine could be a long-term solution, what types of vaccines are under development, and the progress the University of Hong Kong is making to create a novel coronavirus vaccine. My name is Marcy Trent Long. This is season eight, COVID-19 with HKU. In the next 10 episodes, we'll discuss some of the leading research coming out of the University of Hong Kong about the novel coronavirus. Actually, I think there's very good likelihood that uh, vaccines uh, for this coronavirus would be effective. Professor Malik Paris is the chair of virology at HKU's School of Public Health. And in 2003, he played a key role in discovering that a novel coronavirus was the cause of SARS. And since then, he's done extensive research on the 2013 MERS coronavirus. During a workshop last week with the Journalism and Media Studies Center at HKU, Professor Paris explained why vaccines are a possible long-term solution to COVID-19. This is for two reasons. If they're effective at the start, they're probably likely to remain effective. Unlike flu, where the virus is changing every year and you have to make a new version of the vaccine. And the reason for that, because the mutation rate is lower, is one thing. But the second thing is that what we can see is that the protective immunity to this virus is targeted at exactly the site at which the virus binds to the cell. So which means the virus cannot afford to mutate that site. So the coronavirus has a much lower mutation rate than normal viruses like influenza. It's a bit complicated, but I'll give it a shot to explain why. A virus attacks your cell via a lock and key mechanism. The surface of your body cells are covered in locks, which are used to recognize molecules and allow them to enter a cell. Coronavirus and other viruses have evolved to be covered in keys that can fit into these locks, such that the cells are tricked into letting the virus inside. In the case of coronavirus, our immune systems are able to recognize this crafty virus key that keeps trying to get into our body cells. But if that coronavirus key mutates to avoid being recognized by our immune system, then that mutated key won't be able to fit into the lock and won't be able to get into our cells. So the coronavirus is motivated and more likely to be stable and not evolve over time. And this, we, we have seen this in MERS. As you might know, MERS is found in a quite a wide geographic area, not just in the Middle East, all the way in Africa. And all those viruses, although they may be genetically different, they all uh, essentially are neutralizable to the same extent. So that is a, a bit of good news, I suppose, um, although not in the immediate horizon because we don't have a vaccine. But I, I would say that if we do develop an effective vaccine, it is likely to be long-term. But most people believe we won't have a vaccine this year. Yes, there are some experimental vaccines. Uh, yes, there are some vaccines under clinical trial, but it's unlikely that we will have a vaccine available in near future, at least not within the next few months. That was Professor Leo Poon, head of public health laboratory sciences at HKU School of Public Health. He was one of the first researchers to decode the SARS coronavirus. What we know that uh, through WHO, there are uh, about 50 
programs for COVID-19 vaccine development, right? They are using multiple different approaches. I would emphasize that many of these are experimental ones and only two of these are now under clinical trial, human clinical trial. The first one is from Moderna, right? What they did is basically they inject this messenger RNA into the vaccine, hoping that they can express the protein to induce immunity. COVID-19 is a ribonucleic acid virus, or an RNA virus for short. It has a messenger RNA for coronavirus proteins. And what Moderna does is that they inject this messenger RNA into a person's body in the hope that it will trigger an immune response. Moderna's vaccine was developed in record time because this relatively new genetic method of using messenger RNA doesn't require growing huge amounts of the virus. The second company doing the clinical trial is the CanSino Biologic from China. CanSino's vaccine platform is similar to the one used in their Ebola vaccine, which Chinese regulators approved in 2017. A phase one clinical trial was conducted in March with healthy adults aged 18 to 60 years old in Wuhan, China. So what is the timeline for these vaccine trials? What I would say is, yes, these are all good, but it would take a, quite a while to go through this process. Basically, this clinical trial tried to address some of these concerns. First of all, the safety concern, the potential side effect, and then the, also the, the effectiveness of these vaccines. Does it able to induce sufficient immunity to protect the vaccine against the COVID-19 infections? And then uh, the other part of the questions are the cost. Is it expensive? Is it going to be produced in a mass scale so that we can vaccinate as many as possible? As we mentioned in one of our early episodes, developing a vaccine is a long and expensive undertaking. So I, I do urge all of you to realize that there are other priority. We may have to consider other non-pharmaceutical interventions to try to suppress the transmission of this virus in the community in the first place, and then buy more time so that we can able to wait to the maybe next year we, and we have the vaccine to uh, make it available for massive usage. The competition across the world for a COVID-19 vaccine is fierce. And Hong Kong has joined the fray. The team led by Professor Yuan Kuok Yung at the University of Hong Kong have been working on a vaccine. The infectious diseases expert isolated the virus strain from the city state's first confirmed patient. The research team is still in preclinical trials, but hopes to move to clinical human trials by the summer. This timetable for the vaccine, however, depends on the HKU research team's ability to share biological materials across the border. Their vaccine manufacturing partners are based in mainland China, and currently biological materials are blocked from crossing the border. The HKU scientists are trying to keep politics outside of vaccine development. Like their fellow researchers globally, an open flow of information that benefits medical research should be the top priority. Certainly, it does seem to be our best chance for discovering a vaccine that can fight COVID-19. Hi, this is Wu Yifei. I'm the associate producer for this series and an HKU student. If you want to learn more about this topic, check out the website fightcovid19.hku.hk. It lists the latest research by HKU researchers and professors about the coronavirus. Also, check out the JMSC HKU YouTube channel for the COVID-19 workshop jointly presented by the University of Hong Kong School of Public Health of HKU Medicine and Journalism and Media Studies Center as part of an initiative to enable journalists to develop greater insight related to public health and science.